So it's kidding me is pretty excited. Where'd you go to school? Oh, you know, the University of California, Berkeley. It's the number one public institute in the nation, year in, year out. It is what it is. We're for sure uh, headed to the ACC. Is that our, that's this year? That's happening. You know, play the likes of Clemson, North Carolina. Geographical rivals. Oh, yeah, exactly. We're right next. We're right next to you know. Uh, Stanford. You think the Atlantic Coast Conference should change its name if it's going to have you know, the Pacific, Pacific Coast? Coast. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, because SMU's right there. So then you're adding, you know, Texas in the middle of the country. So it's really just. just change the A to Yeah, a all, the American Continent Conference. Yeah, Boom. Maybe <laughs> taking some reps on the inside. Just, what's the difference between inside and outside, and how much are you adapting to it? Jade, you've been around for too long to ask this type of question. You know the oh, difference. Okay. Um, no, but. Uh, the difference is timing. Um, you know, when you're off the edge, you get three, four steps. There's there's a second where you have time to gather and react, um, and you move interior, and everything just happens a little bit faster. So now it's now it's a now. Now that guard gets a center slide. You're you know now you got to be aware of, of the protection slides as, as so forth. And um, it's not I would say it's not a huge learning curve because I've I've dabbled before, but it seems like it's sort of becoming comfortable for me. I have to make it comfortable. And that's the name of the football game, is be comfortable in uncomfortable uh, positions. I'm not sure uh, Chase had like practice with y'all, like full team stuff last time we talked, but like uh, you've gotten a chance to look at him for a couple of weeks. With, what's he bring to the team? Yeah, uh, he uses his hand well. Um, big physical body, you know, he's explosive. Um, you know, everything that you sort of knew about him was confirmed. Uh, and I think, you know, he, he has a, a willingness to, to work and respond well. Because, you know, we're, we'll be out in practice and we're, we're calling each other out because we want to make each other better. And nobody's sensitive about it. Nobody gets butthurt about it. Nobody gets defensive about it. It's all just trying to make each other better. And when, when you've got, like, you had somebody who's, like, been really disruptive who can't be disruptive on, on, on game day, like, what does that do for the rest of the, the line? I mean, like. Which, which player are we talking about? Carl? Are we talking about Brian well, Brzee? Are we talking about matter. Chase? Yeah, yeah. If, 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 if you look at anybody. Yeah. They're, they're all disruptive. I mean, Colin Sanders is, we've seen monstrous type plays from him this, this camp. Um, you talk about, you know, Nathan Shepard. You say disruptive, and now I get lost. Put a name on disruptive. Okay, playing both spots, will that change how you, like, study, prepare in the season? Like, you have to study the interior guy? Yes. As as, yeah. Yes. Doubles the work? It just, yeah, it just adds more work. Yay for me. You know, like, that's what you look for at year 14, to do more. Sure. You know, um, the, the name of the game is whatever we've been doing has not been enough, so we have to be able to do more. And if you're not willing to embrace that, beat it. Honestly, Cam, though, like, I mean, you've accomplished a lot in this league. Is there, is there any, do you have, to, do you have to be humble to agree to a move like that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's thrilled to go, but like, yeah, I do want to fight three people sometimes during a play. It, there's, there's no way. I mean, there's a reason why your, uh, your interior rushes are monsters, um, and for for that, I have to, I have to be able to evolve. Here we go. Does that excite you? For of course it does. Come on, more hands. I bring hands to work every day. So you know what's 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 better than bringing more hands? I don't know. I don't know. You know how, how many more hands I can bring, but more hands. What is uh, obviously like you, you slim down. Uh, yeah, I did. On the edge. Wrong time, huh? <laughs> Going on the Wrong edge. time to slim down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for pointing that one out. Uh, we're just gonna make it a game of speed, you know. Um, w w without bringing the, the the probably the best interior defense alignment to ever play the game in Aaron Donald, but you can be small, light, and strong. You know, um, it, it's a it's. It's bringing speed to the game. It's now, you know, looking at the Eric Armsteads, the DeForest Buckners, and then combining that with what you see from the old school Geno Atkins and you know Aaron Donalds. So it's 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 relearning not just edge rushes but the interior rushes and how fast it has to go. If anything, I'm looking at you know Calais Campbell and how he's uh, how he evolved. I, I was just gonna ask you, him and, and JJ Watt were two guys that came to mind who made a career out of doing both. JJ uh, was a, the most dominant disruptor you've ever seen. I, you guys label him wherever you're gonna label him, but anywhere from nine, five, four I like he was he was devastating in the way he was able to take the interior gaps. And and for Campbell then specifically what what do you see that like? How can you do both at the same time? What, what is when you? Well, I say when you play that five on first and second down, and you go down to that three, that this it has to be a mind shift. 
And so you see, you know, Calais play that strong side defensive end and then go play four eye and on third downs he goes lines up on a on a guard and sometimes a nose. I'm not ready for that nose. I'm just <laughs> a whole different animal on that nose. But um when you when you think about what he what, what he's able to do again, it's just it's just becoming more more of a student of the game, which I thought I already was. With, uh, more. Season of more. All of it. Mm-hmm. With so many uh, offenses around the league trying to kind of run this scheme, how does seeing it in practice day after day maybe prepare you guys for the regular season? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we knew exactly what we were getting into. We played we played the Niners a couple of times, you know, most recently was last year. Um, and so him coming to our team, our offense, the way it's starting to change now, you can see how it's more, you know, more motions, more movements. It's all, it's all that dressing that, you, you know, as a defense you hate to see because you're just trying to plant your feet in the ground and hit somebody. Um, but that's just it. Now you have to be able to adapt. If so many teams are like running that dressing, does that naturally become less effective over time? Or? I hope so. Yeah. I, I mean, I hope, I hope we have the answer to everything. So, Cam, having come into camp slimmed down, right, right, right. did you have any idea like that you'd be taking more snaps inside at the time, or did you just want to slim down? I slimmed down for me, like you know. Uh, at some at some point, you know, I uh, I feel like I faced mortality last year with you know the, with the injury, and I was like, all right, well, let's be the best version of me. And so I came in, how I've came in. Um, conditioning has never been an issue for me, as we all know. Um, being able to play 17 games hasn't been an issue, so now I just want to be the best version of me. So whatever that takes. Again, it's a season of more. Whatever whatever it takes, give more. Did I read? Uh, I think it was Jeremy Fowler that you. You came back up a little, like you came in even lighter. Than yeah, I got a little. I got a little too light. I got a little too light. Um, you know, I was I was gonna make my uh, my attempt at at just a pure edge guy. You know, who, who who wants to be who wants to like stop the run anymore? You know, when when everybody when everybody heralds just the edge rusher who is a liability on the edge. Like, come on, it sounded fun, and then reality hit. You know, this uh, you have to be able to hold that edge as well as uh, be a disruptive force in the run game. When you are talking about like facing mortality, like is that hard to come to terms with? Like so, so many times like you've had an injury and just fought through it, been able to play through it. Mm -hmm. First time that didn't happen. Like, oh, it did. It, was... it just wasn't exciting. <laughs> it was. It was a. All right, I'm hurt. All right, I can still go forward. So I guess I'm just going to play the run. How do you handle that? Like if your body doesn't bounce back as fast as it has in the past. <laughs> There was ligaments torn. <laughs> There's no bounce back. <laughs> it was gone. Um, but it's yeah, literally just looking at like, all right, what what can I do to be the best version of me? Is it the running? Is it the training? Is it the rehab? Is it whatever it is? Oh no, it's surgery. Okay, so we have to <laughs> we have to go get mended. Um, and on the mend now, it's all right. What can I do to better my game? It's it's the hand drills. It's the it's the combat awareness. It's you know the 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 sparring. Whatever you do, just to train yourself to be like, all right, whatever comes my way. I've now sharpened my skills to now where we get out here. Now it's, you know, whether it's swipes, long arms, chops, um, it's counter moves. I don't think there's anything that I don't have in my bag right now. How much did you lose? <sighs> Just depends on what part of the year we're talking about. You know, sometimes in the off season you get a little happy. <laughs> sometimes late night at two o'clock in the morning where you shouldn't be eating, there you are eating. So if we say from last year to this year, uh, ended last year, I think sitting at 288, 290, uh, they, they'd say came to camp about 14 pounds lighter than that, you know? Um, one, of these, one of these camps, I think I touched 269 for the first time since like junior year of high school. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then, you know, that's, uh, that's not where I want to be. I, want, I think I want to be right around that 280 mark. So now for the first time ever, I got I to gotta eat, eat what I want it. That's great. Sir, you great. Time for one more. You expect to gain more weight before the I don't know about more weight. I think I'm, I'm happy here. Okay. I'm happy right where I'm at. I'm happy the way we're moving. Um, if anything, I'm I'm beyond uh, excited just to be able to get on the field and compete. Uh, when you have guys like Carl Granderson, who is in my mind reaching his peak, he's he seems like he's in top form. When you got uh, a young kid and in, in Chase Young, and I'm able to push him and, and get make him give more. Uh, guys like Brian Brzee again make him give more. It's a season of more, and the more we give, the better we'll be. And so hopefully, you know, six months from now we'll be talking about playoffs or whatever it is four months from now shit yeah four months from now we'll be talking about a playoff push i don't want to just be sitting here three years out of playoffs talking about oh man we could have i don't have time for could have we've talked about this before it's a season or more cool, cool. 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 cool.